let's solve this quiz question. And so this is a question I made up. Uh, so you can see this is in my course page. There's a, a black and white image of me. Uh, so the course, and this is a for lab on uh, calculating electric fields due to charge distributions numerically by breaking them into little pieces. Uh, so this is the quiz at the end. So let's read it. It says, a ring has a total charge of 6 nanocoulombs. That marker is okay. And a radius of 0.1 meters, which is kind of big, but that's fine. Uh, it's centered on the origin of the xy plane. Find a vector value of the electric field at the location 0, 0, 0 0.2 meters. And then, and then, this one, at x equals 0, y equals 0.1, z equals 0.1. So two electric fields. Okay, so uh, let's start with this. I already started off. So here is a, uh, a ring in the x, y plane, and this is the z direction, just so you can see it. And we're trying to find the electric field right there. So we can create uh, an integral to determine the electric field on the z axis. Uh, it's not too terribly bad. I'll include a link to that down below if I remember, but I'll probably forget. Um, and you get this expression. The, the z component of electric field is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. That's just a constant 9 times 10 to the ninth. Z, this is the distance from the center of the ring to the point where you're trying to find the electric field. Q is the total charge in the ring. R is the radius of the ring, so it's R squared plus C squared to the 3 half. So you can find that. Now, and that, but what if I'm like right here? How do I find the electric field right there? Well, this equation doesn't work for that because that's not on the axis of a ring. So we have to do it a different way. And, and what we're going to do is to break this ring into a finite number of individual point charges and calculate the electric field due to each point charge. So imagine that I look at my ring right here. And it's some radius r. Uh, so suppose I break this into pieces like this. This is, this is bad, but I can at least draw it correctly. So then what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight pieces. And then if I want to find the, uh, I'll just draw it right here, the electric field at this point, I'll call this RO for my observation location. It could be anywhere, right? Then what I need to do is for each of these, I need to find the vector R, which is the vector from that point to my observation location. And let's call this R. Q, that's the vector from the center, that's the location of the charge, they're not all at the same place, such that R is going to be RO minus RQ. The vector from here to there is the vector position of the observation location minus the vector location of the charge, and that gives me the vector R. And then I can find, with that, I can find the electric field, oh, I need one more thing, I need DQ. So DQ is going to be equal to the total charge Q divided by n, the number of pieces. And then I can calculate the electric field due to just that one piece. I'll call it DE. DE as a normal equation is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught DQ, the charge of that, divided by this distance squared, which is the magnitude of R squared, and then I have to multiply it by a unit vector R hat to make this a vector again. That's really important, that r hat. And remember, if I have a vector, let's say right here, r, r hat is a vector in the same direction, but it has a magnitude 1. So r hat is equal to the vector r divided by the magnitude of the vector r. We can do that in Python. This is the magnitude of the vector, vector square, because you can't square a vector. We can do that in Python, too. But that will be the vector electric field due to that one piece. And then if I do it to the next piece, do this exact same thing, I'll find another DE. If I find all these DEs and add them up, that's the total. So the total electric field, E, is just going to be the sum of DE. And this is what we did uh, in calculus, if you, if you do that. It's just that you let the number of pieces uh, go to infinity, such that the piece size goes to zero. Uh, and that's why it becomes an integral. But we're not going to do an integral. We're going to do a finite sum. Uh, but the more pieces we break this into, the better, and we can get a good answer. So let's do this. I want to make a ring in Python. 
I want to break it into a finite number of pieces. And then I want to calculate the vector electric field due to this ring on the z-axis, which you could do with this equation. And then if, if this electric field agrees with that, we're good to go. And then I can just move my observation location. That's all I have to do. So it's really not too terrible of a problem, even though it looks like it's impossible. It's going to be fun. Let's get to it. So let's jump over here to Python. Um, OK, let me say one more thing. How do I break this into pieces? Uh, one of the ways I'm going to do this is to say this is some uh, the location of each piece I can find by theta. And then from going from this piece to the next, I'll have a delta theta. So with that, I'm going to say uh, delta theta is going to be 2 pi, the total uh, way around, divided by n, the number of pieces I want to break it into. And then if I once I know theta and I know the radius, I'll call this big R, then I can find any piece. Rq is going to be R times the vector cosine theta, sine theta, zero. And that's in the xy plane. And then all I have to do is increase my value of theta, and I can find the next piece. And that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm just checking that's the way I did it before. OK. Yep. OK, so let's, let's jump in here and start making some, some trouble. OK, so here I, oh, I got to switch. OK, so here we are. This is a glow script, a web. No, no, it's web v Python. They changed the name. Uh, it's web v Python. Web v Python. Got it. OK. Uh, and I'm going to give you this code. This is, I'm using trinket.io just so it's easy to share the code. Uh, but, but that's not super important. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is to put down my parameters, right? I know the total charge from the problem. Q is, what was it, 6 nanocoulombs? Yeah, 6 nanocoulombs. So 6 e negative. 9. Uh, I know the radius. I'll call that r equals 0 0.1. And then I need to know that 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I'm going to call that value k, just because I don't want to type 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And it's 9 times 10 to the ninth. I think that's all I need. OK, so now I want to break this into pieces. So let's say uh, n equals 8. I'm going to start with 8. If that doesn't work, that's fine. Uh, theta equals 0. That's going to be where, where I'm starting, right? I'm going to be starting on the x-axis. I'm going to move all the way around the x-axis. d theta is going to be 2 times pi divided by n. That's my step size. Oh, I need dq too. dq is q divided by n. OK, so I'm going to draw all these spheres. That's all I'm going to do right now. I'm going to say, oh, is this big enough? Is that big enough? That's too big. OK, how about that? OK, so let's just draw all of these spheres. So I'm going to say while theta is less than 2 times pi, right? So I'm going, to, I'm going to go all the way around the circle until I get back to 2 pi, and then I'm going to stop. And the first thing I'm going to do is to make a, a, a temporary vector pointing to the location of that sphere. RT equals R times vector cosine theta. I've got to spell it correctly, theta sine theta, 0. So this is in the xy plane, just like the problem says. Uh, so I have that, that random variable. Now I'm going to actually just draw a sphere there. So let's say, I'm not even going to give it a name. I'm just going to draw it just so we can see it. We don't actually have to draw this sphere. Uh, so sphere, the position is going to be rt. The radius is going to be equal to, let's say, 0 0.01. That might be too small. I don't know. I'm going to leave it no color. Uh, it was just going to be white, and, and that's going to be fine. Uh, so next thing I want to do is now I'm going to increase the value of theta. If I don't do that, my loop will never end, and I won't move to the next piece. So theta equals theta plus d theta. And that should, should do it. Let's see. Should have eight pieces. Yeah, it did. OK. Yay. Um, I always get excited because I, I question my own uh, competency sometimes. So start right here. This is theta equals 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight pieces. So let's start with that, and we'll calculate everything. And then we'll go back, and we'll change it to 16 or something like that. I like using uh, things that break in evenly, um, just so you, you could get some weird things happening, but that's fine. OK. So I want to now 
calculate the electric field at some location. Let's put the location as a sphere, which we don't have to do. So I'm going to say RO, that's my observation location. And from the problem, it's going to be vector 0, 0, 0 0.2. So once I have my series, which I don't even have to draw, oh, I need something else. Let's do, what I'm going to do is to calculate DE and add it to the total E each time. That means I have to start with the total E. I have to start with the value of E so I can add it to that. If I don't have it, I can't add it, right? So that's that. Okay, so now I can go right here and I can say, the first thing I want to do is to calculate R. R is the vector from the, the charge, which I'm calling RT here. The location of the charge is at RT, to my observation location. So I'm going to say R equals RO minus RT. And RT changes every time, so this is going to change. Now I can calculate the electric field. DE, that this is just due to that piece. It's going to be K times DQ times the unit vector R, which is in Python, that's going to be norm, norm R, divided by the magnitude of R squared. So in Python, in web vPython, uh, the magnitude of the vector is mag R. And I have to square that. And then what I want to do is to add that value to my total electric field value. E equals E plus, I didn't put a, a, a thing, that's fine. E plus DE. I could put a, I could put a sphere at that location, but it, it won't look very great, but let's do it anyway. So sphere position equals RO, RO. Uh, radius equals, let's put this 0 0.005, and let's make it yellow, just for fun. Okay, so we're done. Let's just go over here and print E equals E and give it units, Newtons per coulomb. I could put an arrow there too, but again, I just don't want to, I just don't want to, I don't really care. Okay, let's, I never saved this, did I? E due to ring charge. I have so many Python programs, it's crazy. Run it. Oh, see, that looks giant, but it's not. See, it's just because it's in front, see? Because that's the Z direction. Is that okay? But there is my electric field. Now, you're going to notice that this is not zero. It's not in the z direction. It's in the x, y, and z direction. However, these values are so super, super stupid tiny that it doesn't really matter. And you get a z component of 965.98. Now, let's just check, right? Let's go back over here and do this. E theory equals, I'm looking at my equation right there, k times z, let's say, z equals 0 0.2 k times z times q divided by r squared plus z squared to the three halves and then print e theory equals e theory and this is going to be a scalar and let's just see how the two values compare and this is only with eight points, remember that. So you see, I mean, with just eight points, I get very, very good agreement between those two. And in fact, exactly, except for those tiny little errors. Uh, let's just see what happens if I change that to 16 data uh, points. It should still work, just better. Okay, same thing. Uh, I could change it to 32. You can really put whatever value you want, but I like to do that, 32. And there you go. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, what if I move my observation location? And now this does help to have that sphere there. I don't have to do hardly anything to calculate this part. All I have to do is go back over here and change the observation location to where I want it to be. What did I say it was gonna be? Zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, that's it. That's it. Now, the theory is gonna be wrong. Well, it's going to print the same thing. That's fine. I didn't change that. So there's my observation location up there, not on the axis. So the, the analytical version does not work. And you see here I have a zero x component, which is fine because it's 
It's centered on the x-axis that cancels, but not in the y or z direction. And that's the answer. Okay. So this is a, a great example of how it would be difficult to do this, not numerically, not impossible, just super difficult uh, to find this electric field. And that's only with 32 points, and we get a, a fairly good value. We could make smaller and smaller piece sizes and see if it changes the answer, but it, it would be fine. So electric field due to a charge ring down below. Um, and maybe something else I can't remember. Maybe, maybe I have uh, another video. No, that's good. I'll just make sure I have the analytical the calculation for the electric field due to a charged ring on the axis of ring down below and the code.